The Gauteng MEC for Roads and Transport, Jacob Mamabolo, has released a report looking into allegations of corruption at driving license testing centers. Now, the investigation has uncovered a total of 4,912 fraudulent transactions. The MEC joining us in studio now to talk us through how many people he has fired. MEC, that's just shy of 5,000 incidents of corruption. How many have you filed? Firstly, good morning to you, to all the viewers, and thanks for inviting us. Um, thanks a lot. I think the very first thing to say is uh, we are very much pleased with the report that um, we have uh, made public yesterday. It lays a very good uh, solid baseline for us to you know, to, to, to go through a roadmap of what needs to be done. Yes. The very first thing being, um, without fear, favor, or prejudice, we should make sure that there's consequence management for those that are implicated. And um, we will also be look, working with uh, law enforcement to make sure that um, the second part of it, which is a criminal investigations and hopefully finally prosecutions uh, that take place. So both internal uh, disciplinary process, mm. law enforcement will be done. So um, <clears throat> when I leave here, uh, let's say in the afternoon, I'll be meeting with our teams to uh, make sure that our internal disciplinary processes kicks in. So we will be commencing with that. It's the first thing that we have to do. I'm also very pleased that the report has um, pointed out to cases where there were findings before but nothing had happened. So we are also following up on those. So at this point, I think um, we are pleased that um, you know, we can be able to take appropriate action and do so quick and fast. Let me see. You've said a mouthful, but it's a roundabout way of saying you have not fired anyone. You're talking about consequence management that still needs to unfold. People continue to be in their positions. extorted of monies by these very people that still remain in their jobs. Why haven't you fired anyone? We have just received the report. We made it public yesterday. And uh, one of the you know, things we should avoid is to take action without following the due process of the law. But you've also um, just mentioned, Demi said, I'm sorry to cut in. You've also just mentioned that there were previous cases that had been reported that are clearly in the purview of the department, but that has not been acted upon. So what should give motorists the comfort today that on the release of this report, real action is going to be taken? Well, you know, the, the arm of the law, sometimes it turns very slowly, but finally it will turn. And I can assure you that um, the fact that we have even in this report said, look at previous cases, it's itself, um, it should itself, you know, give confidence that uh, we live in no stone unturned. And uh, as I'm saying to you, today, this afternoon, we will be meeting with our teams to look at... Um, uh, we have to unleash the full capacity of the department. So the, the fact that we have done, the, conducted this investigation and we have made it public and we are acting on it tells you that um, as government, when we say we are committed to root out, to act upon, to address issues of corruption, this is clear success story. This is a clear evidence no, of no, the no, determination MC. of government no, MC, to no. address corruption. No. We, we can't talk about the success story, MEC, when no action has unfolded. I'm putting it to you, MEC, that if people are to gain confidence in what you are saying, at least you should be telling us that we have conducted X number of lifestyle audits of police officers who are at these testing centers, the ones who are involved in corruption, and these, these are the lives that they lead based on their salary, which doesn't make sense. Is that done? Was that done? So let's clarify the point. You know, I think it's, it's, it's important to appreciate that um, we are a country with a profound principle of the rule of law, 
our constitution um, uh, requires that uh, we uphold the law. So you can't arbitrarily, without evidence, um, just take action against people. You've said there was um, previous so, uh, evidence yeah, that has yeah. not been acted upon. Yes, and precisely that. We have gone to investigate that and we are going to act on those. But what we must not do, it will be an act of sheer populism to just think that you can, you can now that you have con conducted an investigation of a report, act on it without following the law. That will be trembling on the law, on the rights of people, and that's how more often we miss it when we don't follow the law to the end. So I'd like to say to you, um, <clears throat> let's have confidence in the law that um, it, will, it will deal with these matters, and I don't think uh, we should be trembling on the profound principle of the rule of law. So right. we will take action. Action is definitely coming, but it must follow due process itself can be outside the law. So we have a report. We are going to institute disciplinary action within the confines of the law, not arbitrarily. So, so I'd like to assure you that that will happen. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So a timeline of when we expect this action as members of the public, because we are the people who are losing money hand over fist to the people who are, con who are involved in corruption at these testing centers. So a timeline and when it is that you're going to give an update on the steps that have been taken thus far. So when we look at the issues of timelines, let's take it with respect to the disciplinary actions. Um, so, so as I say to you, this afternoon we, we're meeting to kickstart that. So it means... Um, the, the, the team that you're working with will then say to us what are the next steps, laying charges or giving people charge sheets and then the process starts, obviously there will be hearings. So it will be an extreme um, you know, speculation on the matter if uh, one were already to say it will take such a long time to conclude hearings. So what is important though and what is um, really very profound is we are starting immediately by next week. Yeah. Our teams will be starting to say, okay, here are the people, here are the issues, let's issue the charge sheet. Then the process will go. When will we give an update? Um, uh, I think let's look at, uh, you know, qualitative progress made, good progress made, at any time we'll update. So, so anytime the media people like yourselves can call us and say, how far are you? But I'm assuring you right away, right now, today, we are starting with the implementation. The impact of that, the, the actual positive outcomes of the process will obviously be seen in due course as we move forward. But updating, we can update you at any time. All right. We sure. press for time. I've got to sway your attention to the ongoing, I would say, crisis at Patco, the bus company. Uh, that company has already fired 105 drivers. As a, a transport department, do you have any role or do you have any say in how that company conducts its business or basically what's going on at Patco? You know, Cody, well, I appreciate that uh, we don't have time, but if you are to permit me to say the following. One is that, um, you know, the situation that's happening in public transport where stakeholders and key players in the space seem not to be, you know, um, appreciating the principle and the message that we're trying to put forward of you're better when you sit around the table to negotiate your issues. Mm -hmm. If you look at the minibus taxi industry, lives are lost. Now with Patco, jobs are, are, are going to be lost. So if you look at just e-hailing, when they've got challenges, take to the street, fight and all that. So the, the, we, we have set up an arbitration office to say, in public transport, can we embrace the culture of peace of negotiations. Mm. So at this point, we will be... Uh, let me just appeal to the PATCO uh, leadership, the board, the management, uh, the workers, that chasing each other in the streets, in courts, all over the place, but avoiding a table like this one, is not going to help any one of them. We are appealing to them to sit around the table and 
They should do their best to make sure that jobs are not lost. Families depend on the income to live. So for us, really, the issue of job losses shouldn't happen. So to that extent, we will be engaging uh, with the PATCO uh, management, the, the board, to check what exactly is happening. But at this point, we're appealing to the parties right. that they are better around the table and they will get a win-win solution if they sit around the table. MEC of Transport in Gauteng, Jacob Momobolo. Let me thank you very much for the time that you